Jun Woo is the biggest anime loser you'll ever see. Everyone treats him like he's literally invisible all his life. So the only thing that kept him from kicking the bucket is solo leveling, because he's a mega simp for the Chad son Jin Woo. But everything changed when a magical system chose him to become the McDonald's version of his hero. Now gaining the ability to turn invisible, he goes on a quest to become stronger to unlock more powers. But first he sets his eyes on everyone that treated him like absolute anime trash. It all began at work in Ocean Square where life continues to treat him badly for liking anime. Regardless, a co-worker bumps into him and John Cena's his work straight to the ground, but other co-workers act like they saw nothing and proceed to stomp on his work. He looks up and notices some large but non kadongs in front of him, so he can't tell if he should transform into a simp to admire the guillets on them, or should he chew them out for being savages. After choosing to download the mental image of a giant bakery to use it as content for later tonight, Ro gets up to summon his best impersonation of a Karen. The girls turn around after hearing Jungwoo yell at them, he gets scared when he gets hit by a nasty side eye, while the other looks totally disgusted. As such, Bro pipes down and says it's nothing, so now we know this dude is an absolute beta male after being unable to defend himself. With Jungwoo trying his best to recover the hours he spent on some ripped up paperwork that's due today, he gets ganked by his team leader Miju. Surprisingly, she helps out gathering some of his documents which shocks him, as no one has ever helped him out in his life before. She even tells him that they should have helped him out instead of making it worse causing Jungwoo's jaw to drop thinking that he just scored a Makima to his Denji. However, after picking everything up, she immediately orders him to drop off his work to her personal desk, even though he hasn't finished finalizing everything. Upon making it to her office, Bro hallucinates and thinks he's about to score causing his sausage to rise up from the dead as he's seen this in cultured anime play out before. Unfortunately for Jung Woo, the turntables turn as it's revealed that he activated the trap card of Miju, and he just got totally baited by her. And to his horror, this wasn't just a prank bro, so she actually rips up Jung Woo's month's worth of work in front of him, while calling him trash. After ripping up everything, she hands him back his work while ordering him to finish everything by tomorrow, or he's going to get his butt fired from the company. To make matters worse, Miju gives him her Christmas stockings after they suddenly get interrupted by her assistant. So Bro gets humiliated even more in front of others. Nonetheless, he angrily heads back to his desk with stockings and hands, so he furiously searches up sussy anime without using incognito, while still on company time. Eventually, night falls, and since the deadline is coming up very soon, he's forced to stay back, but Bro gives up and throws everything up into the air. He notices that Miju had to stay late as well, so like a savage, he jungle ganks her from the mid lane, while constantly berating her for treating him so badly. Bro then loses it, so he goes for revenge while looking like a total psycho, taking a page out of his favorite anime he watches every night. Luckily, this was all a dream, so Jungwoo snaps back to reality and sighs, knowing that his life will be forever suck, and there's nothing he can ever do about it. And since he spent all his money on gacha games like Genshin Impact, he goes ham on his report knowing that if he gets fired, he will turn homeless. Fast forward to later on in the night, Bro went to grab some energy drinks, but he catches his entire team out and about so he sneaks around to find out what's going on. Turns out, team leader Miju and his entire team always go out on team dinners every day where they purposely leave him behind without him knowing. As he continues to eavesdrop, Jungwoo learns that Miju already revealed his secret of being an orphan to everybody, and that Miju was the sole person behind everyone treating him like trash, since she thinks he's not her equal. Suddenly, a game-like system appears and notifies him that he has awakened as an outsider class after reaching his absolute limit of disregard. The system then starts engulfing his entire body causing him to scream, so basically it shows him for being the biggest loser around. After screaming like a girl, even though he felt no pain, he accidentally drops his drink causing everyone nearby to divert their attention to him. However, the team investigates the noise they just heard only to find no one nearby even though Jung Woo is clearly right beside them. Confused as to why no one can see him, a notification appears and informs him that he is now invisible. After learning that no one can actually see him, the Fire Nation invades his brain causing him to look like the biggest ultimate sussy Becca, with crazy thoughts running around his mind. Back at Ocean Square headquarters, we find Miju running into another team leader who's revealed to be named Song Chiwon. She seems to be super nice, so that's probably why Miju looks like she hates her, and has to act super fake around Chiwon, but we all know pros never fake. Nevertheless, after Chiwon leaves the building, Miju beelines straight to Jungwoo's cubicle, but she's unable to find him even though he's already literally right behind her. Seconds later, Jungwoo flashes the biggest smirk of his life after running around her like a monkey, making sure that he's actually invisible, so now my sussy senses have begun tingling. So instead of robbing a bank or becoming a superhero, he chooses to use his first special superpower to get close to his team leader, and we can already imagine what's going to happen next. 
You're exactly right. Bro uses his invisibility to use a five-finger discount on her twin pyramids of Giza and her hidden trove at the same time like a true menace. Luckily for her though, before Jung Woo could fully transform into the Korean Kevin Bacon, she once shows up after hearing some weird sounds loudly travel to the elevators downstairs, so she asks if she's okay. After making sure she's okay, and that no one else is around, Chi Wen suddenly interrogates her about her team's work. However, Chi Wen's face disappears after asking her why she's making other people do all her work so you already know she's about to drop the justice hammer on her. But Miju just laughs it off and tells her to mind her own business, so to teach her a lesson while mid-conversation with Chi Wen, Jung Woo starts grabbing her bakery super hard in hopes of eliciting an embarrassing response in front of another team leader. She's able to keep quiet and keep everything tighter than Iris Sama from Fire Force, but Jung Woo gets shocked after hearing Miju constantly throw him under the bus. Afterwards, Miju hurls insults after insults at Chi Won, even though the brunette only wanted to protect Jung Woo from his abusive team leader since she knows something's wrong with Miju. Eventually, Jung Woo is hurt enough, so he smacks the living heck out of Miju's large double hoppers, which sends her barreling face down to the ground. Finally, she gets a taste of her own medicine, so she tears up a little after embarrassing herself in front of Chiwon. But she's unsure of what's happening, so Miju comes to the conclusion that karma has made her way around. At the same time, Chiwon begins pitying her but starts scolding her in the name of the company, unable to believe that a leader would drink so much at headquarters while she forces the youngest employee to stay late to finish her own work. In the end, Chiwon storms out unable to fathom the true nature of Miju, so Miju is left speechless, while looking exactly like the killjoy spray my teammate's hips constantly runs into. With Chiwon now gone again, the room quickly fills with sussy nation mist since Jung Woo looks like he's about to unleash some forbidden jutsu on his target that he's been waiting all his life for. But since Bro is a menace, he plays around with his prey first, making Miju go crazy as she's unable to leave the room even though the doors are unlocked so she starts to think that she actually drank way too much. Nonetheless, she continues to try and pry the door open to no avail since Jung Woo is actively stopping it from opening from the inside causing her to break down, unable to wrap her mind around it. With her last resort, she remembers that she has the security team on speed dial, so she quickly opens her phone while trembling her boots off. However, her nightmare has just begun so her phone gets swiped away from her hands and then for some reason, sticky goo began appearing on her face, but it smells way too familiar for her. Seconds later, Bro rips a major fart right beside Meiju without pants on so he put a whole new meaning to deadly but silent farts. Jung Woo then proceeded to deliver a special package directly to Meiju's airways, catching her by total surprise as she's busy wondering what's making her gasp for air. Usually, we get some dumb anime main characters, but just from the faces he makes and his evil smile, we already know Bro is built different. I don't think he's going to take the high road like his hero son Jin Woo. Anyways, it's hard to fight back against an invisible man, especially against one that has a grudge on you. So Miju loses her one versus one duel allowing Jung Woo to give her a surprise milkshake. After swallowing up an entire load of invisible shakes, Miju gets up defeated, but she starts yelling at the empty room that she's reporting whoever this is to Riot Games to make sure they never play Valorant again because their aim sucks. Unfortunately for Miju, she's about to learn why you never threaten nerds and their video games because Jung Woo is about to turn her into a PlayStation and our menace is about to plug in his invisible controller. Anyways, we never click bait on this channel, so like the title and thumbnail says, Bro actually turns invisible and immediately starts clapping Miju. At this point, Jung Woo decided to pay tribute to Dragon Ball Z his own way, so he powers up over level 9000 and proceeds to land direct Kamehameha hits on Miju over and over again. Regardless, long story short, Bro began making his anime dreams come true, and for some reason, Miju can't get enough of what's going on but me personally. If some weird things start happening, I'd quickly jump through a window or smash the door open. With Jung Woo destroying the living daylights of Miju, Jung Woo starts getting flashbacks to the time he first met his team leader. Not only was Miju the most beautiful girl on campus making every guy have a crush on her, she also had extreme talent allowing her to get promoted as the youngest team leader at the company. However, she was ruthless to her core and even though she knew she was gifted with Burger King's size proportions, she used it to her advantage to make dudes do anything she wants while keeping them all at bay since she prioritized work over everything. But back to the present, loser Jung Woo is no more since he believes himself as the King B that's now clapping a queen that tormented him the entire time he was stuck in Team 1. So just like Snoop Dogg, he puts the dog in her Snoop with no care in the world and the crazy part in all of this is that Meiju is a psycho for loving every battering ram hit so she quickly crosses the finish line. Suddenly, after Meiju hit the climax of her mountain, Bro gets surprised ganked by a game notification alerting him that the time limit for outsider mode has been reached. 
Mere seconds later, mist began unraveling all over him, causing him to slowly become visible again, but luckily for Jung Woo, Meiju already passed out from her super sensitive phase. Bro then breathes a sigh of relief after making sure she's actually knocked out cold, and since he didn't cross the finish line himself, Jung Woo decides to just head home and act like nothing ever happened. Fast forward to the next day, Jung Woo heads to work and hopes for the best that he didn't get found out since there's going to be a Roblox update coming soon and he needs money to buy some new skins. With everyone treating him like normal, he thinks the coast is clear, but he suddenly gets ganked by Meiju, who orders him directly to her office. Unable to make eye contact with him while still wearing the exact same clothes as the night before, shortly after privately entering her office, she quickly turns around and starts yelling obscenities at him, calling him names like Bottom Fragger and Doe Fruit Spammer. It was at this very moment Bro knew he screwed up and so his life flashes before him busy thinking about all the great times he spent on binge watching anime and listening to new Jean's performances, so with the jig being up he knows it's all over. Another flashback occurs to exactly one hour ago where one of the team members named Hina is surprised to see Miju up and early due to daylight savings. Hannah is surprised to see Miju wearing the exact same outfit as the day before, and to every girl out there it's an absolute crime for wearing the same thing especially to work. But since she's the team leader, she shuts her mouth and says nothing. After Hannah turns around, Miju begins freaking out since she just woke up after hearing Hannah open the door so her memories begin flooding back from last night. However, she's still not sure if everything was just a dream or if it actually happened because she knows she drank a little bit before, but it's not like she went over her limit since she's a veteran after all. So back to the present, to find out the truth to what happened last night, she's decided to corner and gank the one person she thinks could be the culprit behind her crazy dream. Luckily for Jung Woo, he doesn't instantly admit to being the invisible man, instead he pulls off the biggest brain move of his career by turning the tables on her and acts like he has no idea by what she means. To make things even better for Jung Woo, his lies are proven right by cameras since he's clearly seen staying back late only for him to disappear later, and there were no signs of him coming back at the same time as Cho Wan and Miju. Eventually, Miju gives up trying to interrogate him since his story totally made sense, so she lets him go and tells him that it seems like there was a misunderstanding causing her face to be flushed with embarrassment. As such, Jung Woo excuses himself and leaves the room but his smile tells it all. Clearly, he's super happy that he didn't get caught red-handed, so it's time for round two. His sussy smile quickly gets wiped off his face when he tries to exit the doorway only to be ganked by one of his team members with massive badonkadongs who usually treat him like he's worthless. After blocking Jung Woo's way out, she looks eerily cautious so she quickly gets the attention of Miju, worried that something might have happened as she heard loud noises come from her office. But since Miju is still embarrassed of what happened, she tries her best to act like nothing happened between the two so she makes an excuse that they were busy talking about work. However, upon hearing Miju talk about his presentation, Bro panics while looking like me when I procrastinate really hard since he totally forgot about work after becoming the invisible man the night before. Bro then quickly remembers that he spent the entire night replaying what happened in his head over and over again since it was way too good to pass up, so he's nowhere near finished completion. Seconds after learning that Jung Woo hasn't finished yet, even though it's literally her fault, she screams and yells at Jung Woo at the top of her lungs, causing everyone within earshot to get jump scared due to her booming voice. She then continues on berating him in front of everyone like a stepmom, but she better watch out since she might find herself stuck in the laundry while stepson Jung Woo comes around. Nevertheless, Meiju gets super stressed out since she's the one that was supposed to have it finished by today, so she sends Jung Woo off to finish it but I don't think neck pain will be the only pain she will be feeling very soon. And so Jung Woo is forced to leave the area more humiliated than the island boys, but since he's the invisible man now, his blood boils more than ever, but it looks like he has a plan in hand. Fast forward a couple hours later back at Ocean Square headquarters, we find Miju preparing for her presentation, but she's busy being distracted at the thought that if Jung Woo wasn't the one that penetrated her defenses last night, then who could it be? Eventually, she gives up trying to find out what really happened, so she gaslights herself and comes to the conclusion that she most likely just made everything up in her dream. But let's be real here, which one of you sussy backers are always dreaming about invisible girls or guys rice cake smashing the heck out of you every night because that makes you an ultimate sussy backer. Anyways, half an hour later, all teams show up for their work presentation and it's now time for team 3 to present but Jung Woo is nowhere to be seen. It's then revealed that Miju is already up on stage presenting for Team 3, so Chiawon turns into a vulture and begins asking hardball questions left and right. Luckily for Miju, she was born with intelligence levels through the roof, so she's able to thoroughly answer them all while male team leaders are busy staring at her cannons. 
You can also learn that Jungwoo pulled off the impossible earlier by finishing his presentation thanks to plot armor so Miju was able to continue on. But in the middle of her speech, something looks wrong as Miju looks like she just seen a ghost. Board members then take notice of her sudden facial expression change so they ask her if she's okay only for Miju to make a remark about how her throat feels stuffy. But then it suddenly dawned on her, the last time her throat ever felt this stuffy was the night before and we all know exactly why it felt stuffy and it's not because she's sick. Mere seconds later, her nightmare comes true again while stuck in front of everyone after feeling sudden, sussy Fire Nation invasions on her bakery and her watermelons simultaneously, so she's not sure how to respond. Since she thought it was all a dream, she didn't expect to get ganked by the invisible man once again. And let's just say Jung Woo is enjoying every second of his outsider mode activation. But since this is the most important meeting of her life, she trudges on like a soldier in front of everyone, while trying her best to hold the climax of the mountain in. So Jung Woo better step up since Bro is literally invisible. And so Miju continues on with the presentation while Jung Woo is playing at a disappointing intensity level of 1 out of 10. Especially when this dude can do anything he wants to get back at her. He can literally just make it seem like she's a psycho by removing parts of her armor in front of everyone, but I guess Jung Woo is small brain after all since he wants it slow and steady. Nonetheless, with Miju now halfway to completion of her presentation, Jung Woo moves from cupping to grabbing the personalities in front of him, then he decides to go for the garden down below. It was at this very moment Bro Solo leveled up his attack, causing Miju to accidentally squeal so hard like a vegan pig by abruptly removing her captain underpants. Luckily for her though, the stand is blocking the view up front so no one can tell. The madman then follows up with a quick patent and raise her diamond skirt up a little bit ability, showcasing some mad cake causing Miju to turn around but much to her horror, she sees no one behind her. With Miju's bakery now primed for a quick jet entry, Bro whips out his nether dragon and slides it beside her garden causing her to accidentally make weird primal sounds making the audience ask her if she's okay. But since Bro is a menace to anime society, he lets Miju gather some composure in front of everyone, but we all know his dragon balls are roaring to enter her time chamber any second now. Regardless, Jungwoo continues to laugh to himself like an evil villain, busy thinking to himself that it would be no fun at all if he made her downfall quick and easy like Nadia from Call of Duty. And Sir Jung Woo allows her to continue on with the presentation minute by minute, but as she continues on, he keeps sliding his lightsaber right outside her starship in between the legs. In the end, Miju completes her presentation and she ends up getting a standing ovation due to too many simps, causing Chi Won and Jung Woo to not be particular pleased we already know Chi Won is seething inside. The horde of simps then gather around outside to talk about Miju where they thought something was different about her today, but Jung Woo takes advantage of this intermission to sneak out again. At the same time, Hina ganks Miju to congratulate her on the presentation, but Miju just shrugs off Hina before she could even finish her sentence as it looks like she really needs to drop a number two. After finally making it to the bathroom, she sits down on her throne to try and comprehend what just happened since she doesn't believe in the supernatural, but she did in fact feel a sausage right by her patty. But then the sussy turntables turn when we discover that her special starship is leaking like a waterfall. So she tells herself that she can't believe that a thought of an invisible man is making her batteries turn on more than a Tesla. And the worst part in all of this is that she's not even Android 18 from Dragon Ball Z, so there should be no feelings involved at all especially when it's not Krillin rizzing her up. As such, she takes the sussy matters into her own hands so she goes ham like spam while on her throne, since the invisible man teased her too much and now she needs to cross the finish line herself. However, Miju fails to take into account that her mysterious invisible man could have been following her the entire time so Jung Woo is able to watch her transform into an ultimate sussy Becca. Suddenly, Miju hears a voice whisper to her ear that if it's his fault she's acting this way, then it's time for him to take responsibility causing her to abruptly stop being a sussy master. She then attempts to ask the air nearby if there's anyone here, but she receives no response so let's just hope her throne is squeaky clean, because things are about to be dirty as heck. One second later, all hell breaks loose for Miju when she finds her robotic legs swing wide open like my omen, and then she starts feeling an invisible hot dog making its way inside her own buns. Meanwhile, Jung Woo is super surprised and ecstatic that his Costco jumbo hot dog easily slid in deep within Miju's starship, since it was already more wet inside than a great flood from Noah's times. Bro then asks Miju out loud if she's a pervy sage apprentice, since what kind of person would go to their work bathroom to relieve their super sussy nation desires while still on company time. Upon hearing the invisible man's voice again, she yells at him claiming that she knew he was a person the entire time, so she threatens him to stop or else she will scream like a hyena from One Piece. However, Jungwoo flashes his signature smirk and urges Miju to do it, 
knowing that if people came rushing to her rescue, that it's pretty much her downfall as no one would believe that an invisible man could be real. Ro then makes a good point to Miju, calling her dumber than your typical Isekai main character as the only thing people will see is her being in a sussy position on her throne. Now speak of the devil, after telling Miju to think logically, two girls walk in to wash their hands so Jungwoo laughs and tells Miju to do it while whipping out his thrusters, ready to go as fast as the flash within her leaking spaceship. With Jungwoo now going super Saiyan on Miju, she tightly holds on for the wild ride, not wanting to make a sound while the girls outside began gossiping about the team leaders. These girls must be deaf since there's no way they can't hear loud smacking and squishing sounds, so the plot armor thickens while we learn that Chu Won is actually the daughter of the CEO of the company. At the same time, Jung Woo looks like he's breaching and entering the perfect spot over and over again, so it's only a matter of seconds until Miju loses the duel. With the girls still inside doing their crazy anime makeup, Ro goes even harder than a sweaty Fortnite pro using his default skin pickaxe inside Miju's treasure trove trying to make sure she passes out just like last time. Eventually, Bro feels the starship in front of him collapsing its walls tighter and tighter than Donkey Kong. So the savage removes Miju's hand muffles knowing that she's about to cross the finish line. The girls outside instantaneously turn around after hearing Miju's voice escape through the stall, unable to be quiet even if her life depends on it due to the sheer force the invisible man is using to plow the field with right now. The two then decide to get closer, busy wondering what the heck is going on inside, so they ask Miju if she's okay, but they receive no response at all other than hearing maiden calls. So then the girls decide to leave her alone since they somehow think her primal sounds equals to her needing to drop a massive dump on her throne, so I have no idea how they made this distinction. Nevertheless, with Miju giving in and losing their one versus one culture duel, she looks like she's about to get reincarnated in the sussy world. So Bro whispers to her that he's allowing her to cross the finish line now. In the end, the girls leave thinking that Miju is about to drop some massive bombs so they don't want to smell any of it, but in reality, she just hit the climax of the mountain making her look like she just got rocked by an earthquake. Regardless, Miju is left shaking and trembling on her throne, busy muttering ancient English with a London accent after getting absolutely destroyed by the invisible man. After completing his mission, Jungwoo reminds her to never mess with him again, or she knows what the consequences will be, so he leaves the stall leaving Miju behind without looking to see if there's anyone else outside. However, as he leaves and closes the stall door behind him, his magical mist disappears from his body causing him to return back to his visible self after reaching the limit of his outsider activation mode. Unfortunately for Jungwoo though, he doesn't realize that Haina was in the bathroom stall right beside them the entire ordeal and somehow she had some amazing timing, so she was able to see his face as he left the bathroom. Fast forward to later on during Nightfall, we find Jungwoo walking around the city trying to figure out what to do with his newfound powers and abilities. But the first thing that comes to mind is him not getting caught every time he wants to get revenge so like a true sussy Becca, his hidden dragon instantly grows after thinking of team leader Miju. Eventually, Bro comes to the conclusion that he can literally do anything he wants now, so it's time for him to become stronger so he can change his life forever. Plus, he can buy unlimited skins for any game he wants now. Nonetheless, he decides to keep working for Ocean Square as a low-level employee when he can literally become a billionaire if he wants, and it's all because of revenge. However, as Jungwoo continues to walk around busy brainstorming on all the things he could do by going invisible, he's unable to detect the fact that someone has been tailing him the entire time. Fast forward a couple days later, Jungwoo is being chilling at work, but he's super tired after being assigned so much testing to do for an upcoming project. He's also been testing his superpowers while outside work, so he's able to figure out that with his current skills, outsider mode can only last for around two hours until he gets stronger. And since it's still level 1, he's been trying to figure out ways to level up, but nothing seems to work, and he really wants to reach level 69 as fast as possible. Regardless, Bro goes back to work and snaps back to reality, but it's been a few days already and he still hasn't seen Miju go to work, so he asks the assistant leader what's going on with her. But Glasses Nerd just looks at his direction and then proceeds to stare at him for a couple seconds before saying nothing and outright ignoring him treating Jungwoo like he's invisible. As such, Jungwoo realizes that everybody in this office always treated him like trash, so it's time for him to take revenge on every single one of them, one by one. But as he continues with his evil villain monologue inside his head, Bro gets ganked by Haina who comes by to personally tell him that Miju has been taking the days off since she's not feeling well. Jungwoo then thanks her as no one really comes by to talk to him on purpose, but she follows up by asking Jungwoo if she could privately see him for a moment. Things then escalate weirdly super fast when Hina goes on her knees and flashes some fat badonkadonks and Jiets, once they got some alone time. 
She even gets super close and whispers to him to stay strong, while urging him to come to her if anyone mistreats him at work so she's acting a bit sus. Then the next day, she starts hitting him up on company hours so bro is a little bit shocked, since no one has ever slid into his DMs ever before. So as he drinks his Sprite, and by the way, Pepsi is better than Coke, Jungwoo ponders if he should reply since every time he slid into someone else's DMs, he always got blocked. In the end, bro just shrugs it off and finishes the day still absolutely hating his work life, even though he got superpowers now. But as he heads home at an ungodly hour, the sussy turn tables turn when Jungwoo coincidentally goes home at the same time as Hana, even though she never stays this late. After some quick small talk, her eyes go dark so y'all know things are about to get real, because Hina ends up inviting him to go out for some drinks, but now my sussy senses are tingling. Shigen goes as far as putting their entire tab on her, so something is fishy. But it isn't the smell down there and for some reason Jungwoo is not suspicious of the same person that constantly treated him like trash. And so bro actually has some fun because this is the first time he's going out in a while, and I don't blame him because he's been playing too much Block's Fruits, so it's time to touch grass. Nevertheless, Jungwoo forgets all her wrongdoings when she flashes her pyramids of Giza right at him, whilst she tries to blame everyone else for treating him like the bottom of the barrel Detroit Pistons at work. And this loser actually eats it all up and believes everything she's saying even though she was one of the girls that literally destroyed his work the other day. But you do you kidding me? I can't really blame him when he's got something in his eyes that's more fresh than a French bakery, so we all know he's already lost the battle after seeing those sweet baker's buns in front of him. Anyways, as the two walk back home, clueless Jungwoo gets ganked by Hana, who invites herself to his house, so he's taken aback and left speechless. Even though he's technically a superhero now who fights injustice using his banana tree plantation, he's still a beta and not an alpha, so he says nothing and allows her to keep following him home. Upon arriving home, he even lets her in without saying anything, so I am pretty sure he failed the basic survival instincts test all because of the blood rushing down there. Luckily for him though, she's not out to destroy him and instead, she literally throws herself at him as soon as they got in like he's some kind of handsome billionaire. And within just one minute, the sussy levels went straight from 69 to over 9,000 as all clothes come flying across the room as if some savages were stuck unable to reproduce for over a century. This time, however, Hena is the one that gets ganked by surprise after seeing his prince behemoth come alive for the first time ever, unable to fathom how this quiet geek hit a monster the entire time. To no surprise, she's a menace so she's able to fully handle the banana tree plantation with one quick gulp and keeps going for more causing Jungwoo to almost explode his volcano. She then smirks after seeing Jungwoo almost lose their one versus one culture duel without her even putting his chocolate inside her cream donuts, so bro better get ready for the real battle. Mere seconds later, she stops slurping the 7-Eleven Slurpee on him and gives him a crazy look while busy questioning him whether or not he's seeing someone at the company to which he denies. Eventually, she takes in his entire battering ram inside her sea with ease, causing Jungwoo to almost pass out from her sheer veteran experience, but she keeps asking if he has a girlfriend. Now something is up for sure, but luckily for Jungwoo, he's able to take control of the situation and began showing her how he's not just a nerd by sending her into another dimension by effectively using his banana tree. Regardless, bro fills up her milkshake machine with his fresh milk he was born with, and just as we all thought it was over, Hannah whispers to him that it's time for round two. But for round two, things get super sus when she puts on a blindfold on him, acting like she's trying to make him a ninja, but she even goes as far as to tie him to a chair. The sussy turn tables then turn when Hana begins laughing at him after bro almost lost round two after she baited him by making him think he was clapping her, but in reality it was her sock. The room then goes silent for a couple minutes, so Jungwoo begins to worry something might have happened to Hana, but in reality, she whipped out her phone to film bro stuck in a pickle. Nevertheless, the silence is broken by Hina's laughter after she yells at him that she caught him race car driving Miju at work the other day and makes it clear that this was all a setup and that she never cared for him in the first place. She continues on by calling him stupid, and the only reason she's here is because she wants to know what really happened. With Jungwoo now fully exposed, Hina threatens to send everyone he knows a video of him clapping her sock unless he tells her exactly how Miju allowed him to destroy the papaya she was born with. After getting super angry due to the situation he's in, his outsider mode levels up due to his disdain levels hitting max capacity. Bro then starts looking like he's about to rip the ropes he's tied with through sheer force, but before he does so, he unlocks a brand new ability all thanks to Hana being a menace to society. However, he uses all this pent up anger by doing nothing, so he just sits there while Hana puts everything back on, while still looking down on him. She then leaves his place without ever freeing him and continues to laugh like an evil villain, 
so bro better get back at her good ords chill ver for him. After a couple minutes of taking in everything, Jamu breathes a sigh of relief and proceeds to activate Outsider Mode Level 2, giving him a brand new skill to conveniently phase through everything. He then gets up unfazed, looking like he's got something devious planned up in his small brain so it looks like Hina is about to be taught a lesson to never pick on anime weebs. Fast forward to the next morning, we find Hena on the subway busy laughing at the video she took of Jumbo being a sussy master but me personally, I ain't about that watch sussy things in public life. Nonetheless, this psycho is having an amazing time thinking about Jungwoo's downfall since she thinks he's the key in taking down her rival, Miju. However, her evil scheming while on public transport gets interrupted when she suddenly feels someone taking a handful of her precious cake, but she doesn't turn around due to utter shock. At first, she was just hoping that the weirdo would stop, but she ends up finally turning around to confront the weirdo after she felt both buns getting the five-finger discount at the same time. But as she pre-fires the corner with a yell, there was no one to be seen, so all the guys behind her begin thinking that she might be on something and it might be a white powder. To make matters worse, with Haina beginning to think she might be on the loose end today, she gets ganked by another co-worker, who also happens to be a manager of the company. It was at this very moment our invisible boy showed up, looking like he's watched too many sussy animes like you, and he's about to live his wildest dreams vicariously through himself. And so bro goes ham like he's cam spam by firstly going after her twin dragons, swinging them around like a baseball whilst placing his chilly hot dog right beside her city gates, causing Hannah to make a weird sound out loud. Of course, she tries her best to act normal in front of the manager, but Jung Woo is determined to get his revenge, and he's barely even scratched the surface of what he's planning to do next. Mere seconds later, the manager finally notices her acting super sus, so he asks if she's okay, only for Hannah to beg him to ignore her, because her tummy is apparently hurting. Eventually, she pulls out some mathematics and bends at an acute angle perpendicular to Jungwoo's prince behemoth before letting out constant primal screams causing all attention near her to wonder if she's going crazy. Luckily for her though, the manager gets off at the next station, so she decides to stay to avoid him only for a billion other Japanese to fill the subway, because it's prime time and everyone needs to get to work. Now stuck in a corner and nowhere else to go, Jungwoo activates phase 3 of the plan by pushing Hina against the window ready to rumble, but he's about to whip out his Ender Dragon to decimate the Nether region. It's now game over for Hena, and there will be no rematch for the loser, but somehow with her getting defeated over and over again, no one notices that Hena's underpants were removed and the treasure cove is left leaking like a waterfall. Soon enough, Hena is fully unable to stop her primal sounds from coming out since Jungwoo's intense rice cake smashing will be making sure she will not be able to move around the very next day. Now the only thing left on her mind is to make sure no one at work or anyone she knows can see her in this state or else her life is over, but at least all these people are random passerbys. After half an hour of her being a sussy baka in public, someone finally notices her in rice cake smashing position, but the bro was on another train going opposite of the tracks she's on so she still has massive plot armor on her side. Regardless, at the final stop she falls over when the door opens but still, no one is wondering why the heck her buns are out in the open while there's a massive pool of sticky liquid right under the spot she was standing on. Some people eventually try to help her out without judging her like a true Samaritan, but all they can see is her face filled with hard eyes so it looks like someone got domain expansion. So with the clapping monarch getting his revenge on Hina, he proceeds to go to work while leaving her on the ground leaking very sussy liquid straight onto the train platforms. He also about to use his brand new ability allowing him to steal her phone without her ever noticing, and since bro got mega plot armor, his face scan bypasses her phone password. But as the menace sifts through her phone, she receives a call from someone called the Crazy B Words, so he makes a face that he usually does when he's about to explode his mini volcano. Of course, bro uses a small portion of his brain and answers it to find out who it is, but much to his surprise, it turns out to be none other than Miju herself. Even though Jungwoo says nothing the entire time, Miju activates her Japanese powers and yaps the entire time, ordering Hana to do more work but Jungwoo hangs up on her. However, Ro hung up because he heard Miju nearby in person, but now he's looking like a supreme sussy baka, so we all already know where this is heading. He then ganks Miju and faces her head on, asking her if she's feeling better with a slay face because she's been avoiding work ever since the incident of an invisible man rice cake destroying her. However, Miju continues to be a menace even after everything that happened to her, so she just ignores him and orders Jungwoo to start pulling his weight on the team, but we all know her double ice cream cones way more than Jungwoo. After shoving Jungwoo away, Miju struts her large but onkadonk swing side to side, but she seems to slowly be changing, since she realizes that she snapped on Jungwoo even though he just wanted to greet her normally. 
As she walks back to her office, she begins wondering why just hearing his voice sends shivers down her spine. But it's probably because he blows them out every time he gets the chance to, and she only ever hears the invisible man's voice. Nevertheless, after encountering Jung Woo that day, she decides to head home early because she's feeling sick to her stomach for some reason, so she goes to wash off. However, she baits us all when she mentioned feeling sick, because what she really meant is that she wanted to feel what's it like to hit all the way inside her stomach from such a large prince behemoth, so she tries to reenact it. Unfortunately for her though, she got no tools to help her in her quest in finding something comparable to Jung Woo's fresh sausage, so yeah, she really do be a huge sussy baka. Even as she finishes washing up, she lays on her bed to start imagining what the invisible man looks like, but for some reason, she imagines him as a black man, so I ain't saying nothing. Anyways, she continues to use her imagination to rock her world, and it's super effective, allowing her to finally cross the finish line with ease, so I guess everyone here is a true sussy baka. In the end, she removes her middle and pointing finger from down below and proceeds to look at it in disbelief, unable to fathom how far she's fallen, but she blames King Anime Recaps for her downfall. Meanwhile, Jung Woo continues his anime evil villain arc trying to teach people to never be mean, because you never know what karma will do to your life sooner rather than later. Anyways, Mr. Savage starts salivating at the thought of all the power going to his head and to his blue eyes white dragon down below since he wants to conquer and subdue Miju to turn into one of his pets. But before he goes on with his plan against Miju, he turns his eyes to the current prize, Miss Hina, because another clapping back tour is on its way. Back inside headquarters, upon sitting down at her desk using her crazy bakery as great cushions, she finally realizes that her phone has gone missing with no idea where it could be. She grimaces at the thought of her not being able to find her phone again, but the only reason she even cares about the phone is because she used her rare sussy jutsu technique to obtain the dirt on Jung Woo, and there's no way she can get them again. But speak of the devil, he appears and ganks a panicking Hina, but bro looks like Gru when he's got a devious plan in his head only for him to turn his attention to manager O. Oh. Luckily for her though, he isn't out to get her right this instant, but he's just biding his time, lurking in the shadows like a true sussy backa waiting for the king to upload. Nevertheless, Hina is shocked that Jung Woo isn't trembling at the sight of her. But since she doesn't know he's the culprit that jacked her phone, she acts as if she still has the dirt on him. As such, she quickly asks him to go to a private area, so the two could talk but upon making it to the company rooftop, all she does is attempt to blackmail him again. She then smirks and tries to get Jung Woo to spill the beans on any dirt he has on Mijo, but she better watch out since this dude is the type to never delete his browser history because now he's got all the power in the world. Nonetheless, Jung Woo snaps and proceeds to bend Hannah's reality by ordering her to stop yapping, Chadley informs her that he ain't scared of her, so if she really wants to try and cook then, he will gladly let her try. Bro then stares directly into her soul, and not at her twin pyramids of Giza, telling her to do whatever she wants with the photos, because at the end of the day, she's the one that looks like she's scared. He continues on to inform Hina that a better approach to getting information out of him would be to use her sussy skills to make his chili hot dog feel better, so he pulls her super close. Bro then says that if she's able to unload his milkshake right now, then he might actually reveal Miju's deepest, darkest secrets, but Hina is having none of it, so she speeds away from the maniac like Speedwagon, as she's finally met her match. Regardless, Hina borrows the Flash's speed to exit the rooftop, but her G-Yats can rival anyone else in this world because that skirt looks like it won't be able to hold on much longer. After Hannah disappears into the abyss of the 9 to 5 work life, Jung Woo takes his time to stroke his ego knowing that with his powers, he will always be above those that treated him like trash. He then mumbles to himself that soon enough, Hannah will find out what it's like to be trained, and when I mean training, I don't mean work training, because she's about to experience the greatest workout of her lifetime. Now that bro thinks he's invincible, and has become an unstoppable force, he happily heads back to his minimum wage job because he doesn't want to get fired. Unfortunately for him though, Bro receives some instant karma and gets his face smashed by the door when team leader Chiwon comes out of nowhere with her phone in hand. And without skipping a beat, she continues on her conversation with her husband while outright ignoring Jung Woo since there's no way she didn't feel the force of a door hitting someone on the other side. Now me personally, if I was Jung Woo, I wouldn't be taking that, but I also wouldn't want to be someone that would make Jung Woo angry because he always seems ready to place a banana sword exactly where it doesn't belong. Nevertheless, Jung Woo continues to be quiet and sulks in the corner, while keeping all this pent up anger in, but we discover that Chi Won is the daughter of the company president, and her new husband is richer than Jeff Bezos. Jung Woo then listens in on her entire conversation about Chi Won wanting to have a mini her, so she bends over like a gymnast giving Bro a full view of her forbidden war cabinet. 
But as he continues to eavesdrop, he starts having second thoughts of Chiwon since he actually begins to pity her, because her husband does not rice cake smash her so it might seem like her husbando might have other tastes if you know what I mean. After hearing more than he could handle, Jungwoo attempts to make an escape for it, but the door is way too loud when opening it so bro starts to sweat harder than I do after I ate a Taco Bell. All hell then breaks loose when Chiwon abruptly hangs up on her husband and makes eye contact with him. So Jungwoo prepares for the worst scolding of his life. To his surprise, she just walks by him without saying anything and treats him like he's an invisible man, but every time she took a step he could feel the ground shake from the intense wiggling coming from the older badonkadonks. Chiwon then disappears back into headquarters, so Jungwoo breathes a sigh of relief, but he can't tell whether he should be insulted or if he should feel gratitude for not being fired on the spot as a low-level employee. Fast forward an hour later, Miju finally comes back to work and the first thing she does is she heads straight to Jungwoo's office just to berate him in front of everyone. To make matters worse, she takes him up front and begins to yell even more loudly so everyone can hear how incompetent he is, and she even goes as far as telling him that he will never break his 30 losing game streak. The skies then go red like his red carpet of losses, so you already know Miju went too far by talking about his losing streak so I can already feel my sussy senses tingle off the charts. After heading home, Miju quickly rushes to take a nice warm bath after a long day at work doing nothing but sitting down. She's then more joyful than usual because she didn't get ganked by the invisible man at all today, so she washes off carefree and attempts to relax the best she can. But as Miju sits down in the bath, her worst nightmare comes true as Jungwoo was already sitting there, skillfully aiming his banana tree right at the opening at the most opportune time so she basically got what she wished for. And in comes his baby Groot, allowing Miju to again remember what it's like to have a battering ram directly hit the stomach of hers, all the way from the opening gates of her treasure cove. Jungwoo then speaks up while still in outsider mode quietly telling her how much he prefers how she does her water temperature because it's literally just perfect, not too hot and not too cold, but now things might get spicy. After hearing the invisible man's voice, she asks how long he's been there but she isn't able to finish her sentence as she gets interrupted by a giant wave striking her inner depths with such precision. My dream has to hold on for her dear life as she finds herself stuck on a roller coaster, but her ride conductor looks like he isn't ever going to stop soon but at least she secretly enjoys the entire ordeal. Again, I feel bad for the neighbors because Jungwoo is about to make a lot of girlfriends and wives disappointed when their significant other can't reproduce the same output as his blue eyes white dragon. Nonetheless, Jungwoo pulls off a big brain move and warns her to stop invading his space because he was the first one in there, and she's the one that randomly decided to invade his personal space causing his dragon avatar to be fully engulfed by an unwanted being. A flashback then occurs back to earlier that day when Bro was just being chilling at work and Miju had to ruin the vibes he had going, but he didn't even do anything wrong to make Miju blast off like Team Rocket on him. She even left him absolutely humiliated in front of everyone since Chi Won got mad at her, but it wasn't even his fault that this company literally has a bunch of girls acting like they're from mean girls, busy going after each other so Jungwoo got stuck in the crossfire. So this is why Mr. Invisible Man has decided to pay her a visit today, so hopefully she finally pieces things together and realizes that the monster rice cake destroying her is the same one she always blows up on. Anyways back to the present, Jungwoo is having a blast and doing some rice cake destroying with Miju. So Yu warns her that he's about to make sure her treasure cove is going to be exactly shaped like his banana tree plantation. He then reveals the fact that he's been trying to get back at her all afternoon long, but she always kept herself surrounded by other people, almost as if she knew she was about to be paid a visit. So basically he had to wait until Miju got home before he was able to strike like the Avengers, and thanks to his phasing skill, he just walked himself right in.